Hi, and welcome to the webisode, Mr. Wilson Teaches, Self-Portrait Half and Half. Today I'm going to teach you how to make a self-portrait using a half photograph as well as a half shaded pencil drawing using value. The face in half, and to do this I'm going to be using a razor and a see-through ruler. I'm going to use a see-through one so I can see if I'm actually splitting it correctly. And typically you want to line up the center of the eyes line with the tip of the nose and then hope everything else follows and you can see the um, split between my teeth isn't correctly lined up so I was looking a little to the side when this photo is taken. Um, so as long as it's relatively close it'll be good. And then you're going to slide the razor down the center and that will give you the two separate portraits. Um, if you're right handed it's a lot easier to use the right, uh, left side and that's the one I'm going to attach. I'm going to be drawing the right. That way as I draw I can see what's going on on the other side. Um, so it becomes sort of difficult if you're trying to draw this side because you're covering up what you want to see. Um, the next step is you're going to cut out the image and when it comes to your hair it can be sort of tricky in terms of the lines so try to do your best you can get rid of all those wispies or flyaways or whatever you want to call them um, or if you have a huge chunks sticking up you can always edit that out. And I'm going to cut around carefully so that I'm getting rid of all of this background. And you can also cut out the other side too and that makes it easier to start so you can actually trace or outline the image so that when you begin you'll be able to have everything sort of set into the same area. I'm going to cut out both of these. And you can also choose which side you want to draw depending on how you look. So if your hairstyle is parted a certain way, if you have a blemish or something that you don't actually want in the picture, it's pretty simple to just choose the other side and work from there. Okay, and then you're going to take an extra slice of paper, and that's just so you don't get glue all over the place. And I'm going to glue the whole back. And just be careful as you glue this that you're holding it in place. Um, it's really easy to tear this paper, so like that almost. And you want to ensure that you don't get any rips because they will show up when you're final. I'm going past the edges so they know everything is going to stick down. And then you're going to take your final paper. Make sure it's going the portrait way. And leave yourself a little space so that when you map these, you're going to have some room to work with. I'm leaving an area there. And making sure it's all attached and nothing's sticking up. And that's how you start. And then we'll move on to the drawing session. It is starting to put in each of the facial features. And really the easiest way to do this is to start by tracing this outline. And this is the only trace I allow in the project. Um, it is if you're a real beginner and you're just practicing the value itself or practicing getting the facial features in, you could trace over and make an impression and then be able to trace from there. But um, for this project at seventh grade level, expect to be able to draw in all the features yourself. So I start by tracing in the outline. And that really does help yourself space things out as you work. And the easiest way to start this is to start from the center and start measuring out each of the body parts. So I'm starting with the nose, um, which is the smallest inside feature. So it's a little over one and a half millimeters. I'm going to put in a mark a little over one and a half. Do the same thing with my lips. Uh, it's about two and a half millimeters, two and a half. Measure the inside of the eye, which goes to one and a half. A little under one and a half actually. I'm sure they're in line together. And the outside of my eye is about four. Four. Um, so this only works if you're looking straight at the camera and you have that line of symmetry. If you're off to the side, this measuring system is not going to work and you're going to have to um, try to balance it out by looking at your other one. Um, the hairline goes to about five. Around five. Um, you can also double check these measurements. So if I hold this here and say this is where I thought that was, lift it up, and it's about accurate there. Um, same with like the nose, line it up, get your pencil where it should be. You see that one's just a touch off, and I'm going to move it over a little. Um, the next part is actually drawing in a lot of these features, and for this it's almost just like 
using a mirror image. I want my chin to come up. Bring the neck down. This is my shirt here. Or the hairline. That starts to tuck in there. And you can also keep this one right by you. And that sometimes makes it easier, especially if your picture is a little off in terms of being centered. Let's come up a little bit more. Eyebrow. And I'm probably making this look a little easier than it is, but that's uh, if I practice this quite a bit, and especially drawing my own face, I do a lot. So if you get frustrated, it's okay. You can always erase, make sure you draw light. And you can see I'm just getting in you know, a basic, basic shape of each thing. I'm not trying to do any shading really. That's because I want to make sure it looks right before I put in the rest. Make sure that iris is the right size as well as the people. Um, if you get those wrong, it usually ends up looking way off. That's one of the most important parts right there. Teeth can also be pretty, pretty difficult. Most um, sub guards, when you start drawing this, you're going to end up drawing your teeth too small. So make sure if there's three on this side, that's something you should have on the other side, three. All right, so there's the basic shape. And the next thing I'm going to show you is the value. On your face, a lot of this is going to be just smudging, um, which is a technique I'll show you. Um, and that's because you're young and your skin is still pretty tight. So the older you get, the more harsh lines you're going to get in your face. Um, you can see some of them are starting, like here in the underline of my eye. Um, depending on how much fat you have in your cheeks and your neck, you're gonna get extra lines in here, or things like dimples. Um, so that can all throw it off in different ways. So the way I start this is picking out all the darkest areas. So you can see my eye, eyebrow, and the inside of my mouth and ear are the darkest areas. And I'm trying to match the same intensity on the other side. Um, so this makes it start to come alive. And if you're having trouble seeing all these different shades, what I do is I squint my eyes a little bit. And what that does is it tells you if you're matching it correctly or not. And typically I find that most students end up not going dark enough. So if you want to add it in little by little to make sure it's right, that's fine. But you do have to create the same intensity on both sides. And a lot of times in pictures, your eye color gets lost. So I have hazel eyes, so I'm going to leave this a little lighter than the other side. I don't want them to look pitch black like they sort of do in the picture. Have any eyelashes. Um, so this technique right here I'm doing is called smudging. That's where I'm taking the color from this lead of my pencil and I'm starting to add it into the picture. What that does is it creates a shadow without creating any harsh lines. especially around the nose. You don't want a lot of harsh lines around the nose except the side and the nostril. And some of you will have this line too as well in there. So an area that never gets shaded is right in there because that wants to stand out. Um, your upper lip is usually darker than your bottom lip. And that's because of this shadow that's created there followed by highlight. This is dark. And then I really don't even put any pencil on the top lip there. That's where the light goes. Also some around the chin. I have extra fat in the cheek area, so make that line, but nothing too strong. I don't want that to pop out too much. Make myself look obese. I'm gonna add a strong shadow underneath the neck and where the shirt meets. forehead. Um, all the way around the face I add a shadow and that starts to thin out your face. 
need a darker line works there. And depending on your shirt color, so this is all going to be dark, then you can create fake folds in the fabric. So you can either go by the picture, sort of just make your own, and all you do is just add down different pressures. Especially where the collar meets the shirt, I'm going to do a darker shadow there. And typically I'd spend a little more time on this. I'm, I don't want to waste all the video airtime, so I'm going a little faster than I would, but you want this to look smooth so it actually looks like fabric, so I would sit here until I get rid of all the pencil lines. Um, Alright, moving up to the hair. Actually, let's hit the teeth first. Um, for teeth, I just do the inside of in between each tooth. And then I just sort of take my finger and run across it. Same with the ear, you don't want to draw a lot of attention to these parts, so you pretty much just shade them in and then smudge them out. And then people won't really notice them as much as the more important parts. All right, um, for the hair, you have to follow the way your hair grows. So mine goes up, or that's the way it's gelled, and then it goes out and down. So I'm making these lines go up, making this go out, and then making this go down and it's shorter. Um, once you get the basic line, then you can start adding in more pencil. Do a whole layer of smudging. And it really depends on your hair color. If you have blonde hair or light hair, it's going to be a lot less line. The darker your hair is, the more pencil work you have to do. And your hair naturally has these highlights and low lights. Um, so you want there to be some areas where the paper actually shows through. And you can see in here there's a lot of darker areas and think about it more like shapes rather than pencil lines. There's a lot of darks in there, a lot on this side. They usually blend this area. Let's get a little darker. And that's really the basics of how to do this. Um, it really depends on the lighting you have, um, depends on what your facial features are what kind of lights and darks. So you really just have to base it off of your own face for this photo and go through it and figure out where the dark areas are, where the light areas are, and then squint your eyes and try to make the two match. Um, that's the process, and there's the final piece there. So make sure um, that you're following each of the facial features lines and make sure that you're doing enough smudging that this starts to come to life. Um, you don't want it to fall flat. And that's it.